Well, <clears throat> the Clippers made their move, made their free agency move before the deadline ended. And it seems like we have now gotten the player that was, I guess you can say, predicted is supposed to come in the offseason. But hey, I guess you can say better late than never. And uh, for Clipper fans, if you didn't know, for other NBA fans, if you didn't know, Rajon Rondo, well, a few minutes ago, since I'm making this video, um, has recently got gotten traded um, to the Los Angeles Clippers for Lou Williams and two second round draft picks. So obviously, I'm making this video to get my thoughts on the deal. And two, I will also, if I have time, make a Clippers game recap. I, mean, I, I don't know if I'll do a Clippers game recap of the Spurs game. We'll see. Oh, I probably will in honor of Lou Williams' goodbye to the team. I'll probably do it and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, Rajon Rondo to the Clippers for Lou Williams and two second-round draft picks. I'm going to be honest. I like the deal. It's a nice deal. You do not give up any future assets like a Luke Kennard or a Terrence Mann. You essentially give the Hawks Lou Williams and his expiring contract that's going to expire after this year. Presumably, I'm guessing he'll probably just end up retiring. Um, and you just give them two second-round picks. And the Hawks were willing to part with Rajon Rondo and give you essentially what the Clippers seemed like they tried to get before the season started. Now the Clippers have the guy they want. Now, what I find funny is damn near – what I see is half of Clippers Twitter likes the move and is okay with the move and is just like, okay, thank you, Lou. You've done, you know, wonders for us. But there's another side of Clippers Twitter, which, again, was like a few days ago when Clippers – was literally Clippers Twitter versus Clipper Twitter. But, okay, what are all of You have another side of Clippers Twitter, which is mostly from Clipper fans who were never in the void of trading for Lou Williams as well as the other Clipper reporters and stuff like that. Um, again, no disrespect to them. I think they all do great content for the for covering the team and stuff like that. But clearly, you know, I'm going to be honest. Maybe they didn't do enough homework because the reason why I feel like the Clippers did this move was definitely for the most obvious reason, the playoffs. It seems like the Clippers have bought in and they believe in the whole playoff Rondo theme and to be honest I have to buy myself into it as well because the last few times he was in the playoffs with teams he has done fairly well and he has made a team play better one of the most I guess you can say types of playoff runs he had that was <clears throat> I guess you could say I guess not brought to the radar is the year when he played on the Bulls when they had Jimmy Butler still and Dwayne Wade. If not for his injury, the Bulls would have probably swept the Boston Celtics. And Rondo was the factor, was the reason why they were doing all of why the reason why they were up 2-0 and stuff like that. And again, he broke his hand because of it. He broke he 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 broke his hand and essentially got look what happened to the Bulls after that series. They essentially lost like four straight games to the Boston Celtics after he got hurt. So I think that's a pretty good, uh, you know, thing to say, well, I think he can really help out this team. Last year with the Lakers. Now, some freaking people, I mean, like, listen, don't get things inflated. It was the bubble. Regardless, you know, re re regardless, it was, even though it was the bubble, he still helped the Lakers be put in a position to win, get to the distance, and get to the dance. And that's what the Clippers are looking to do. And yes, is it hard to part away from Lou Williams? Yes. But honestly, I saw this coming. Like, at first, if you asked me at the start of the season, I would not think that deal would be done, and I thought the Clippers wouldn't need to do that. But as the season progressed... You know, and it's funny, too, because some of the same Clipper beat reporters, some of the same Clipper fans who hate the deal that they did, they were the same people when Lou Williams was stinging up the joint earlier this season when he was not doing anything offensively, and you know he's a defensive liability, and you're always asking, where's Kennard? Where's Kennard? Where's Kennard? Well, uh, guess what? You got what you wanted. 
Lou Williams being gone now does not hold the development of Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard. They can get more minutes, essentially, because I figured Lawrence, the front office, is telling Ty Lue, listen, you need to play Luke Kennard. We're paying him too much money. Two, it gives Terrence Mann the develop development we need for him to do that uh, as well. And again, Rajon Rondo is a nice person. Now that you traded for him, you don't have to start Reggie Jackson when Patrick Beverly is out. You can start Rondo in the games now, unless you want to continue Reggie Jackson in the starting lineup and you have Rondo coming off the bench with the second unit um, and stuff like that. Rajon Rondo is a good um, facilitator. He's got the really, he's got really good basketball IQ, which I think will, some people are underrating him and stuff like that. You know, especially when it comes to the playoffs, he will know how to get guys set up. He'll know how to run the sets, and he'll be prepared when time is. And you guess what? You can put him at the end of games when it's getting late in those late game situations, which the Clippers have had. You know, they've been better as of late, but has had and you can have him be the ball, the ball handler and get guys into the situation that they need to get into based off the sets and stuff like that. No, one another advantage he has over Lou Williams. Um his passing is much better than Lou Williams, I'll tell you this. Sometimes Lou Williams be passing the ball, I'd be scratching my head and I'm like what are you passing for? And then another one is obviously the defense. Yes, will you be losing offense from Lou Williams for Rondo. Yes. Will Rondo occasionally get baskets here and there? Yes. But I'll tell you one thing that's much more better that i rather have better than the offense because I know we have the offensive caliber type of players to get us that offense. And guess what? That is um, the defense side of the ball. And we need to improve our defense. Rajon Rondo's a good defensive guard. Not what he used to be, but he's still a pretty solid defensive guard, if you ask me, in my opinion. He'll get some steals. You know, he, he, he'll he play some pretty solid defense. And that's all I can ask for, which is something Lou Williams damn near almost barely never gave you. Yes, was his defense this year much more improved um, than past years? Yes. But still, you had some traces of the Lou type of thing. Sometimes you had Lou's come in the game and then the whole momentum would stop because he's turning over the ball, he's holding the ball too long, stuff like that. And listen, I love Lou. I do. But I think it was time to go. Clearly, you could see the age was starting to catch up with him. Some of the shots he typically would make were not falling. And then two, you know, he was just making some boneheaded plays. And I felt like the Clippers front office saw him like, okay, listen, you know, he's done the best he can, but again, it's one of those players like Montrez Harrell. There's a guy that ended up getting us being an attractable stop for Kawhi Leonard to eventually bring Paul George over through trade to get here. And sometimes, even if they're a fan favorite player, you're going to have to get something. You're going to have to give them up to be able to, um, you know, contend. What Clipper fans should and the reporters should be happy for in the essence of a trade of this trade is, guess what? We only gave up Lou Williams. We didn't give up Pat Beverly. We didn't give up Zubov. We didn't give up damn near Hopper team. We just gave them Lou and two picks. So I don't know why everybody's flipping out about this. Like, literally, I'm going over my freaking Twitter feed. I see most people just flipping out, upset, mostly the reporters and a few Clipper you know, Twitter accounts, I'm not going to specify who, but they're all pissed saying that this is the worst. Like, they're making it like it's the end of the deal. Okay, is Rajon Rondo in the regular season, you know, not the best? Yes, I will agree. But the Clippers want that playoff experience, that playoff IQ. They saw this dude help the Lakers get there to the, you know, to the finals. Resume speaks for himself. He's a two-time champion. He's played on very big teams. He's been to the finals, I believe, three times in his career. He's got the experience. So I think the experience will help. And two, I think another reason why people are not being brought up, why people are not, you know, focusing much on this part of the reason why um, Lou was traded, if we remember last year in the bubble, Lou Williams probably did one of the most stupidest acts I've seen a player ever do and that's go to a Lance even though he's supposed to celebrate his father's funeral you know for a family member I think it was his father 
and he did end up doing that. But at the same time, he got caught at, in a strip club eating lemon pepper wings. And I can tell you, that was probably when the Clippers front office had their last drop broken. They're like, we came here for a championship and you're out here partying with Jack Harlow in a strip club eating wings in a pandemic. Instead of just getting your wings and going right back home. I think that's what was the breaking straw. And that's why I feel too, that's why the Clippers traded him. Because the incident last year in the bubble. I don't think a lot of people will bring that up. But I really do believe, I think that was a breaking straw for the front office. They're like, if you're not going to give a damn, then fine. And that's why they did it. And two, again, like I said, the deal is a pretty solid deal in my opinion. Especially if it's for the Clippers to win now. You know? And again, it's like I said, it's a deal you had to make. You know, Lou Williams was at the end of his career. Clearly, he's was he's starting not to be as efficient as he was on offense. Yeah, every now and then he would get collect and give you, you know, 15, maybe 20 points in a one of the games. Yeah. But you can clearly see that we his decline was starting to happen. He wasn't hitting those tough fadeaway shots like he used to do. Sometimes the Clippers had a good look for him. Wide over three, he would brick it. Now, I'm not saying Rondo definitely can't, Rondo definitely can't do all those things. But he'll occasionally, and I mean occasionally, there's no confidence with him, with me having him take a three, wide open three. But occasionally, he'll make a three because obviously he's not a threat from it. And if he makes a three, guess what? You'll live with that. But, you know, as I end this video, I want to sincerely thank Lou Williams for all he's done for the Clippers. Ever since he came from the Houston Rockets, you know, he really has been a blessing to this team. And he put made this team fun. That 2018-2019 year was, again, like one of the best, you know, years in Clippers history. And what he did in that series against the Warriors is something that is honestly unforge un unforgettable, you know. One of, the, one of his best moments as a Clippers, when he hit the game-winning shot against the Brooklyn Nets. Like, you know, just memorable moments. And yes, does it suck to get rid of him? Yes, it does. But it's just something that had to be made. It's a move that had to be made. And whether Clipper fans, the reporters, whatever, you love it or you hate the deal, we're going to have to deal with it, and we have to move on with the newest Clipper, and that is Rajon Rondo. And hopefully, he can provide us the services that we think he's going to provide and get us to where he thinks. Now, obviously, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, are they going to be those dudes to get us there? I'm not saying, like, Rondo is the main cog and he's going to be the superstar of the team, but he's going to be one of the pieces that will help this team get there. Again, another guy in the head that will help Ty Lue have these guys set up in positions. You know to help run the offense. So I think it's a pretty good, solid move by the Clippers. Again, like I said, a move they had to make. George Hill was already taken off the board. Now what? Would people be mad if we traded freaking Lou Williams for George Hill? Would people be mad if we traded Lou Williams for Lonzo? That's my question, too, that I'm asking. Would you? How would if, if we traded the other players, Rubio? So, you know, listen, that's the NBA. Some people, some of the Clipper Twitter think we're going to get worse. I think we're only going to get better from this. And listen, whatever you stand, if you don't like it, then how about this? Just don't watch the Clippers. Don't watch the Clippers. And again, I'm going to say this. If Rondo doesn't do much of anything like we thought he was, those same people can clown the Clipper fans that were hopefully and really – fine and overjoyed over this signing like i made a tweet if you saw that tweet i don't care retweet that tweet and mock me for it if it doesn't end up going well for us but you know i like this move you don't give up much of anything if we're being honest like you do not give a terrence man or luke canard up any other assets up you just give him you straight it's just straight up swap lou for Rod, rondo and you know two set around picks now, I don't know what Lou's going to do in Atlanta. Maybe he'll play. He did say if he were to get traded, he would just end up retiring. I feel like he'll probably just end up playing his career in his hometown of Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, eventually retire, you know? 
And, you know, again, like I said, thank you to Lou Williams for what, he's, what he did. Yesterday, he scored 15,000 points. And from what I heard, he said, and they also gave him one, you know, an honorary, I'm guessing an honorary interview with Brian Seaman and Mike Fratello. Um, so obviously, you know, yesterday you can say that was probably Lou's, you know, you know, final, you know, goodbye, his final last impression on his Clippers career. And yes, it sucks to see that Lou Williams isn't going to be a part of this team to win a potential championship if they get to it in the future. But it's one of those deals where you look at it it's like, well, guess what? It's just like the shade deal. You know, you want to be put in a position to be contenders. You're going to have to do the move you might not want to do. And I feel like for the Clippers front office, they probably might have not wanted to do this move, but they had to do it. And obviously, I'm get, obviously they made the move. And guess what? You have to deal with the move they made. But other than that, Clippers traded for Rajon Rondo for Lou Williams. Your thoughts on the deal? Put that in the comment section. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Are you in the middle? Um, what do you think Rondo's going to be bring to this team, especially in playoff time? Um, hit the like button if you like the like this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like the video. My thoughts on getting the Rondo stuff, as well as hit the subscribe button if you want to get more Clippers content going forward. So other than that, guys, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, and hopefully you guys are staying safe out there. Until then, guys, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.